add frothing wine to milk, sweeten it with honey, take up the cup and bear it to the grave, and pour the mingled contents round Clytemnestra's tomb. Cleopatra, so they say, bathed her shapely limbs in ass's milk. A whim, perhaps, but then a queen with slaves wait upon her could well indulge such fantasies. Hello? Mmm, in the bath, darling. It's absolutely marvellous. Mmm, beautiful milk. Cleopatra's bath apart, we know that the ancient Egyptians kept cattle, for there are drawings and records of their herds. In Greece too, and Rome, milk had a special value. It was often used medicinally. Hippocrates recommended draughts of milk as a cure for sciatica and gout. Whey was a household remedy, butter a face cream rich women used. Popeye, Nero's wife, swore by it and took pleasure in the milky softness of her skin, for in the ancient world, milk was a symbol of purity an offering fit for the gods and for the nourishment of men. Today, milk dairying is a thriving industry. The modern dairy, a highly efficient processing plant where milk is heat treated, sterilized or pasteurized, processes which destroy harmful bacteria without affecting the quality or freshness of the milk. Not much more than a hundred years ago, the only way to be sure of fresh milk was to live within spitting distance of a farm. If the milk was still warm when you stuck your finger in it, it was fresh. Bulk transport and refrigeration have changed all that. Most milk is collected in tankers. As part of his job, the driver takes samples from each farm on his round. No milk is unloaded at the dairy until a sample has been taken from the tanker and tested in the laboratory. If the sample's below standard, the whole lot's rejected. Tests are made repeatedly all through production to check the fat content of the milk, to check its density and keeping quality, to make sure that the pasteurizing plant is functioning as it should. With the laboratory on the spot, there's no delay in getting results. Samples from a tanker can be tested for freshness and the result known in 10 minutes. The effectiveness of pasteurization is judged by the absence of an otherwise unimportant substance called phosphatase, which is present in raw milk, but is destroyed during pasteurization. It has no nutritional value, so its loss doesn't affect the quality of the milk. Lost bottles are one of the industry's problems. They last on average for just about 40 deliveries. Over 300 million get lost or broken every year. Another problem is that cows work a seven-day week, which means that dairy plants, as well as farmers, have to do the same. It's no good putting out a no-milk-today note for a herd of cows. All mammals produce milk to feed their young, and all their milk has the same constituents. Protein, sugar, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water. Only the proportions differ. There's more fat in some, more protein in others. Some animals produce more milk than others, more than enough for their young, which is one of the reasons why cows are so valuable. The cow has got a very pink under it, as in a pink nose. Well, the horns are shaped rather like boomerangs, I think, and it's got a lovely bell. Well, this is a cow, and it's still green because it's eaten too much grass, and as on a picture of a farm, it's got the farmer plowing his field, and a cow and a horse eating an apple, dropped from the apple tree, which is just above him. And there's a, even a hen with its shape in a little farmhouse in a haystack. And it's a very nice day. On a hot day, I don't like that heavy milk. I like the quite very, very freezing cold milk. This is Switzerland because it's all white snow in the background. The ancestors of these 20th century cows roamed wild across Europe and Asia. 20,000 years ago, prehistoric man, who hunted them for meat, painted these pictures of them on the walls of a cave in France. They were called auroxen. In the 1930s, two gists reversed the normal breeding process and recreated wild auroxen. Today, dairy cattle are generally single-purpose animals, bred for milk. 
Only 50 years ago, cattle were still bred mainly for beef. A cow eats 150 pounds of grass a day, tearing it up with her tongue and storing it whole in her stomach. When she's ready to chew it, she regurgitates the grass a bit at a time. A calf and 1,200 gallons of milk a year is what this farmer expects from his cows. Given that a cow can have a working life of 15 years, that's 75 tons of milk in a lifetime. They're milked twice a day. The more milk a cow gives, the bigger the ration she gets. It goes without saying that the milking parlor is kept scrupulously clean. The milk is sucked straight into big sealed jars. The scale on the side shows the yield. New milk is warm, the temperature of the cow's body. If it isn't cooled, it soon goes sour. So it's piped direct from the milking parlor into a refrigerated vat and cooled at once. By the time they'd reached the barn, these children on an ordinary school visit were enthusiastically planning a serious farm project. They watched the milk being measured out for the calves. Until they're old enough to graze, calves are fed on reconstituted milk. It has to be warmed to body temperature, just like a baby's bottle. Now they could feel for themselves the rough tongues that make sense for tearing up grass. Milk is collected daily from the farms in refrigerated tankers, but nothing goes into the tanker until the driver has satisfied himself that the milk in the farm's vat is cool and smells fresh. All's well. He measures it and it's piped into the tanker. Getting up not so bad on a morning like this. Almost worth it, in fact, to see the blossom bursting out all over. Hear the birds singing. Hello, hello, hello. What's this? Hold up. Morning, Philip. An extra pint tomorrow, please. There's a lot more to it than just dumping bottles on the doorstep. You've got to know when people are likely to be in and the sort of extras they like. And, of course, you've got to keep your money straight. Mum, the milkman's come. Shall I ask him to leave some cream? We're lucky here, for there aren't many places in the world where milk and cream are still delivered to the door. In most other countries, milk is just one more thing to be lugged back from the supermarket. Darling, Dad wants his cup of tea. There's one thing about the milkman, he's always welcome. And you can generally set your clock by him. Clocks of flats are a bit of a challenge. Even when they're a lift, there's a lot of humping to be done. But customers can help here by leaving out their empties. Milk is all that a baby needs for the first few months of its life. Even a grown man can keep going on nothing but milk for quite a long time, but he'd have to drink something like 12 pints a day. Two doctors tried it for a month and were perfectly fit at the end. And another thing, drunk before a party, it makes an excellent lining to the stomach. For children, it provides protein and vitamins and minerals and all the calcium that a growing body needs. There's as much protein in a pint of milk as in a quarter of a pound of steak or three eggs. It's the most nearly complete food there is.